great to have you back in case you're just joining in. This is Rise and Shine Daily, Richard from Stables of Spectrum Television. And uh, yes, indeed, we have a guest in our midst, and I'm going to hand you over to you. Okay, we have Go been ahead. joined in the studio by the Senior Special Assistant to the Governor of Petroleum Matters at Kwaibom State. He is no other than Sir Victor Etefia. So good to have you in our studios. Good morning. Good morning, yes. sir. Just Welcome. before you joined us, we were talking about uh, the removal of fear of subsidy and how it's going down, the reactions of Nigerians towards the, you know, the assertion or the idea of it. Uh, do you think Nigeria is ready to drop subsidy totally? Is Nigeria actually ready to drop subsidy? Well, uh, 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 we are between the default and the deep, <laughs> deep blue sea. <laughs> and uh, if I may be part of what Serifah is going on, I think uh, the best option is to do away with it. Because uh, uh, it, it has become a vicious circle. It's a crisis that uh, uh, we all must come together and say bye-bye to it. Otherwise, uh, I don't see Nigeria moving. With subsidy, we are not moving. You, it's creating a window for all sort of uh, fraudulent activities. Crisis that has no solution. So I think it's better we call a spare a spare. This particular government did not even believe in subsidy during the electioneering campaign. And then when they came on board and they saw the situation on the ground, I think uh, uh, this is perhaps one of the best decisions this government has taken to unbundle NNPC. So it should go if Nigeria actually wants to move. To move forward. Yes. Okay, now just stay on that line of thought. What are the implications of this? Because um, if we look at it, um, practically the average Nigerian sees subsidy as um, a way of alleviating their sufferings. As per number one, we could actually go get fuel, for instance, at a subsidized rate. So at the point where subsidy is removed, average Nigeria thinks that a lot of things prices of things will skyrocket and uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to go down there. Now that the Nigeria. subsidy is not removed, mm. is the price not skyrocketing? Yes, it is. Ah, so, look, there's an adage in our local dialect that we will We can continue to be so, so afraid of this subsidy. If I may ask you, who is the person benefiting from subsidy. Who benefits from subsidy in the first instance? Is it the poor, the average man, the rich or the elite? When you put it into a, a kind of arithmetics, you know that the very poor that even you are using to synthesize your analysis are not the beneficiaries of the so-called subsidy. Let me show you a very simple instance. Now, as I'm sitting there, I'm the SSA to the government on petroleum matters. I came here with only my official vehicle, which is uh, to here is about 10 liters, 10 or 20 liters. Assuming it is sold at 300 naira, that should be 3,000 in 10 liters. I mean, uh, 20 liters. Am I right? Now, a poor woman that is coming here on a bike is taking five liters. If 2,000 was subsidized to me by 30 liters that, that brought me to this place, the poor woman that is coming here with five liters, calculate the benefits she derived from it. Who is the one benefiting from subsidy? Is that am I the one to benefit or the woman? And so they continue to deceive Nigerians in subsidies. What is it for? Is that the only problem that we have in Nigeria? Education is nothing to write on. Health sector is nothing to write on. Where is it housing? Infra critical infrastructures in Nigeria is nothing to write on. 
And then you are talking about subsidy, 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 subsidy. I think it's unfortunate. Nigeria don't understand. It is the same government that is benefiting from subsidy. Let it, any government function, let a senator now, like empowerment program of the senator, you will see up to 10 jeep that takes an average of 50 liters per vehicle. And then calculate the benefit that he's deriving from each of that jeep that is going for that function. And then compare with a poor woman, a, 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 an average Nigerian, that is going to the same function with only one vehicle. Who is benefiting from subsidy? So these, these are all the logic that one has to put in place. And then we understand that subsidy is nothing other than creating a window for people to defraud the nation. Now, as long as that holds water, there are other opinions that uh, the idea of subsidy was a temporal setup, which was meant to last as long as uh, the refineries were revamped. Now, he has taken Nigerians this long to get our refi uh, refineries functional. No, no, no. Even if the, 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 the we refined our refineries, is government a good businessman? The answer is no. Create that, reform the refinery, put it to the, the highest level of uh, maximum capacity, put a civil servant there. It will go and sit down there with undersized shit. And then at the end of the day, it's going on with a, uh, not less than two, three thousand dollars a day. And we'll tell you that there's something there. Government is not a very good uh, this thing. I, I, I know of an MD of NNPC that was flying from London to Abuja every weekend. <laughs> was that if it were to be the owner of that business, would he run that kind of expenses? These are things we need to put in place. So government is not a good businessman. All of what government needs to do, creating an enabling environment and then allow the business to decide, open the market, liberalize the system, and then competition and market forces will determine the price. But where government hands are soak. As of today, it is only the NNPC that do the importation. It is only the NPC that will tell you this. What are you importing? When you are having crude, you are number six in the world. You are importing. And so, we, we, it's, a, it's a total state of confusion. So, we are not good businessmen. Government cannot be good businessmen. So, let us do the right thing. Good enough, the PIA has become an ax now. It is almost a semblance of uh, Saudi Aramco oil or it's the equity of Norway, Rosenoyen oil. That is a semblance of how the business is being run. Though Nigeria is the same set of people that have been created overnight to become board members, directors, they are the same people. It's I know room was not built in a day, but at a point we will standardize. Let's do it globally because this business is detected in a global scene. It's not a Nigerian business. Oil is not a Nigerian business. Now, uh, there's privatizing the economy, like you rightly said, leaving the market open to, you know, market maybe forces. market forces. Now, we have seen Nigeria try that with electricity and it didn't go down well after privatization. Gone, and the only way so that... What's the guarantee that uh, it will uh, go down uh, well uh, there? Don't compare that. That is another fraud. That is another confusion. What you can compare and contrast is um, uh, this uh, GSM telecommunication. telecommunication. It was the same uh, yaksik hmm. that was used to compare because with electricity. President Obasanjo had the gods. The people are not sincere. Obasanjo was very sincere and committed to this uh, unbundling nightmare. And when it was unbundled initially, for you to own a line, own a phone, was an average of 250 to 30, if you could remember. Mm -hmm. But what is happening today? The lines are free. So it's a matter of being, being there. What we are seeing, all oh, this is a cake loss that has been put in place is designed to pay for a section of this country. The moment we live above that, the problem will be over. Now, uh, we understand that this decision, as lofty as it sounds, will hold Nigerians hostage. Because as it is now, you rightly said that the price of things are already high as it is. Yes. So if we take down subsidy, it's going to triple no, no, the, the amount. Yes. See. So what is the provision of no, government? No, you see, 
I think I have been an advocate of uh, incremental policy in this deregulation. Uh, if you could remember the Babankira style of deregulation, what brought about Tifri, Mamsa, People's Bank, and all those agencies that were designed to cushion the effect of deregulation was Babankira's idea. What this particular administration was doing initially was price manipulation. It wasn't the regulation. But now, I think they have stepped further to uh, unbundling NMPC, if actually they are serious. So if that is done, you need to set up some mechanism. There must be a kind of an embedded mechanism in the regulation that will cushion the effect. If you are pulling out this one, today I'm hearing of 5,000 Naira. Mm. I don't know if you calculate that 5,000 Naira by 200 million people, is it not even another it's, it's problem it's, that yeah. are going to create? Mm -hmm. But in Babangida style, we had People's Bank, we had Mamsa, we had Divri. These were all uh, 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 kind of agencies that were productive. Some creative, some designed to also remove a character to be uh, useful to himself or herself. But this one, uh, uh, 5,000 5, Naira is another subsidy because you are equally subsidizing waste. If I collect the 5,000 Naira, maybe I recharge my card and uh, pay for uh, Nepal bill. It's also waste. It doesn't make any money. And so, Government should sit down. I advocated for incremental policy on deregulation. Phase one, if it were to withdraw 300 naira from it, why don't, why don't you spread it into three phases? Phase one, I will pull out 100 naira. If I pull out 100 naira in phase one, this is the amount I will have. And this amount, I'm going to use this amount to address uh, the health deficiency in the system or education deficiency in the system and then if that is done it is you and I that will go government move to the second phase and pull out 200 naira 200 naira I will address this sector 300 naira I will solve this problem and then when, once you move systematically and then everybody are witnesses to what is going on in the system all what we need to do is to carry the belt and tied our waste, and now follow it to logical conclusion. Exactly the point. In 2015, good luck, Jonathan actually attempted. He removed uh, part of the bill, part yes. of the subsidy, mm. and so far, run down the line, nothing. No, the same been people done. that find Nigerians themselves can still trust them uh, on that on, on that ground. The same people that find themselves in the government house, who assisted the uh, Nigerian to protest with the uh, fine T-shirt with the uh, uh, food. In, in Lagos yeah. and told the world that there's nothing like subsidy are the people that are now being entangled with the game now and they, they find uh, they hardly know how to get out of it because they themselves did not believe in what Jonathan was doing you see Jonathan's system was trying to create or build institutions to take care of the situation and they were fighting the man unfortunately this system is not building an institution I'm not saying what that thing, but uh, well, we thank God, at least in, for not for nothing, try attempt to unbundle NNPC, which they find it difficult today. It's mm. what we are praying they should do it. Okay, now, sorry, let's look at that 5,000 naira. Mm. The government at the center said something, was emphatic, or of the opinion rather, that um, giving 5,000 naira to about 40 million. Nigerians, who the term poorest of the poor, most vulnerable Nigerians, mm. would have a way of cushioning the effect of um, removal of the fuel subsidy. Now, in your opinion, sir, would you say that this, number one, is a good, lofty idea? Then, number two, would you also say that there's a possibility that this money that has been earmarked for the poorest of the poor, so to speak, will get 
to the intended persons. No, that, this is a carrot. Or this is not a, is that a, is that a, is that a, a policy. That is a claim misduplication of uh, uh, fact and creation of uh, multiple problems in the system. 5,000 adults what to who? I don't, I don't know where they get this kind of idea. That is a very foolish idea. My brother, 40 million people. What statistics, what indices are you going to determine the people you are talking about? Who gets what? Who is going to produce the names of those people that you know they are vulnerable? Tell me. Is it the local government chairman? Is it the sitting governor? Is it who? Is it the minister uh, for petroleum? Who is going to produce the list? Uh, what are the statistics? Is it the IDPs that you go and call them vulnerable? What, what is it? This, I don't think it's a good policy. If you want to withdraw subsidy, it's just like now, assuming in a quiet state, it is only AK television that we have. You don't have this spectrum TV. Then all of us are keen in that television to aid this view. Okay. What do you think will happen? It's just that. But now, that system has been liberalized. Licenses is now issued to individuals to put on things like this. This is fantastic. And then um, I were given an opportunity to sit down here and also contribute our own quota into the national issues. Compared to all of us going to AK, the government owned one. That either once a thunder is struck, that is the end. So these are all the things we are talking about. But this, if it is owned, like my friend Tony, what is doing here is it's private driven business. Five o'clock is five o'clock. You as a staff, you know why you are here. But I suppose if I wouldn't know why they are here, they, they will sit down there to discuss with them, with them 24 hours. Udom is not doing this, Udom is not doing that. When you look at the back uh, the door behind them, either they are selling crap not, or they are selling this. They are, <laughs> their contribution is poor. So my brother, we don't need that 5,000. It's confusion. It will be confusion. It will complicate the problem. If you want to withdraw 300, as of today, is 161.17 and a half per liter. Mm. If you want to move to 300 and something, that is about 100 and something like that. Good and fine. Tell Nigerians that this money, between this period and this period, this is what this money is going to do for the Nigerian masses. At least education, that the university is threatening strike every day, I will address the education sector. Is it the one we are going to help? A good pandemic has caused us not to be flying out again, not to be moving our money to India and other countries in the world. And then I want to solve that. And then you and I will see what that money is solving. Not a matter that you will go to Lagos, uh, Lake and recover uh, $50,000 in one uh, compound mm. and you trace him to be former MD of uh, NMPC. So that, that is where we are. That is exactly where we are today. Okay, um, in case you're just joining in, you are on the program Rise and Shine Daily and we'll play host to the senior special assistant to the governor on petroleum matters. We'll take a short break right now and when we come back, We'll dive into all the issues, especially reference to the subject matter of the day. Please stay, don't go anywhere.